Oscar, Oscar, here comes Oscar, the most wonderful time of the queer. They sure don't like female directors. Oscar, Oscar, here comes Oscar, the most wonderful time of the weird. Old Hot Dog Fingers won seven Oscars, and I don't mean Oscars Myers. Oscar, Oscar, here comes Oscar. Did you hear that Activia Yogurt chick won an Oscar? Well, don't shit yourself over it, honey. Oscar, Oscar, he's going to be there. Women talking won an award. I ain't playing them off. Oscar, Oscar, is Brandon Fraser mentally challenged? Just ask it. Oscar, Oscar, here comes Oscar. Puss in Boots won Best Animated Feature. I'm lying. It was Pinocchio. Oscar, Oscar, the most wonderful time of the year. Natu, Natu. Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Others, ladies, gentlemen, but not assholes like murderers and rapists. It's Christian Finnegan. Hello, Christian. That's top five intros ever. Good not really? murderers and rapists. It's Christian Finnegan. Thank You're you. You're really going to start with the intro thing again? Because last time you were on, you said something about the intro. Then we what went into all of that stuff. I don't know, but it turns out Keith's mother died, and he was playing us the whole time. Yeah, so now, right. So now I tread lightly. I'm like, oh, is that how you want to open the show? I'm totally Whatever, game if Keith, your father you... died. <laughs> really good song, Keith. That was well written. <laughs> Me and my dad made peace, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, Christian, it's great to see what? you. What? No, no, okay. What? Okay. What is wrong with that? He was making a joke that he was burying yet another lead. I see. Yes. Uh, it's lovely to see both of you. Bless you. Um, so I'm still a little shell shocked from Keith's opening number. I Did loved see, it. By the Did way, you? shell shocked. Did you see that? Uh, who's the woman that made uh, Marcel the shell? Uh, Jenny Slate. Jenny Slate. She fell down the steps walking up to the Oscars. And I can't find video of it right now. But hmm. it is a full fucking head over heels tumble. Oh my God. <gasps> Oh, my God. Can I tell you, I hate watching the Oscars, but I love the next day recap by you, Keith Malley. I am so excited because I was going to bet you based on the ballot that you sent me that I totally filled out. Yeah. But then your song, seven Oscars for everything, everywhere, all at once. I didn't vote for them once. I didn't think that they would give it to them at all. In fact, I voted only based on the psychology of what people tell me uh, are are. are you know, like things are allowed, like indie movies are not allowed to get so many Oscars. And like for, for hair and makeup, I'm like, well, would they ever give it to a black uh, movie? So I skipped over Black Panther on that one. Like mm -hmm. I am making terrible, you know, I have to put everybody in a box to get my ballot right. And uh, I was going to bet you 10, 20, 50 bucks, but no. Your Oscar felt, predictions are so solely discourse based. What, what's There's that, Christian? Her 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 Oscar picks are solely discourse based, not one actual bit of uh, input from the movies themselves. No, because I only saw everywhere, everything everywhere all at once, and Elvis, and I thought Elvis was just like a, I don't know, some dude staring into my eyes for an hour and a half. And like, <laughs> I'm like, I yeah, guess I, I didn't I, like it. It was. I'm not. I'm not shitting on it. It was like. Is this what like an awkward date feels like? I don't. It was so well, just odd. That, that dude, Baz Luhrmann. You know, it, it, you know when you get a cupcake and there's just like a a foot of frosting on it, and it's like, do we need that much frosting on this cupcake? <laughs> it's and, already a cupcake. Like that's uh, the way his oh, movies feel. I love it because yes, it was all frosting, and when you first get the cupcake and it's all frosting, it's like. Oh my God, I won the lotto. Like, no one could tell me what to do. I could eat more frosting than cupcake. <laughs> Fuck the world. And then you eat it and you're like, oh, there's a ratio for a reason. Fuck yeah. this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, you're watching Elvis and it's like, I guess he is the prettiest. He's the most charming. These are great songs. And, like, his eyes are supposed to mesmerize you away from, like, how much he stole from the black community and still gets all the credit for like putting us together, white and black people or whatever the fuck. It was so, it was, oh, I love what you just called it. It was all frosting. Now, the only other movie I saw was Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I thought that was supposed to, you know, remain in its little infancy that I would have voted for mad? all of it. Are you mad people, other people like it? No, I love it. No, I'm not one of those, like, I knew them when they were a small band and, you know, it was me going to the movie theaters <laughs> twice this year that made them win. Like, it was all me. I am the number one fan. No, I think I think it tells me something 
or not. I think I should like not take the Oscars seriously at all. But it's interesting to me that people do like it. I think obviously the United States and around the world, weed and psychedelics are getting more popular. So that's what this is telling me when you're telling me something like this won that many Oscars. Please, Keith, recap. The tumble, by the way, that would be me. I know that would be me. Going to Colette, like my favorite day. There have been so many times in my life where I'm like, yay, this is the greatest. And I jump up and down because I'm so excited. And like I sprained my ankle. I fell down. I, 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 I skinned my knee. So that would be me tumbling up the stairs. So I feel for this person. Is Hena on Coke today? She She has a very caffeinated quality today. Like it's very... It's endearing, but it's definitely like, like, is she okay? Is she going to have a heart attack? Like, you know what? It was very strange that you both were quiet for that long. I felt it. I felt it. I hear you. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jenny Slate is in, with a breathing tube right now. <gasps> you're joking, right? I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, my right. God. You're the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. Marcel the shell with a feeding tube. That's <laughs> not quite as adorable. It's not as cute with the breathing. <laughs> All right, let's start with uh, the pre-show. Just uh, one little thing I happen to catch that I enjoyed very much. This is Hugh Grant being interviewed. And again, this is a before the show, the dumbest, you know, people they wouldn't really put on the big show uh, interviewing, interviewing, uh, you know. The red carpet. Celebrities. Yeah. They don't know what to say, of course, and the celebrities know even how less to answer. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have the best Thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Hugh Grant, you are a veteran of the Oscars, and you've been here a few times. What's your favorite thing about... Now, now right away, Hugh Grant goes like, yeah, like, I, I guess so. I guess I've been here for time. <laughs> he never won, was never nominated. That's right, all he's thinking. Like, yeah, I guess. I guess I am. But Is not that... really. I only watch it like you. Is that true? He never got nominated. He never won. Correct. Yes. I think so he was nominated wondering. for an Emmy for that uh, very British scandal. I think uh, he should have said. I don't that. Think... He should have said, I'm, "I I have an Emmy though for a British." Scandal. I don't think he won, but uh, he <laughs> should have won for Paddington too. Is what he should have won for. <laughs> That's what he's, he's, he's about. unbelievably great in Paddington too. And I will. You've been here a few times. What's your favorite You've been here a few times. He's like, sure, I guess. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's a, it's a, the, the whole now. I'm trying to think, like, as we go, what idiot's side I'm on. And at this point, I'm on the idiot interviewer side because you should have an answer for what are you excited about at the Oscars? <laughs> hey, anything, <laughs> everybody, we get together, the food, old friends I haven't seen in a long time, just the stupid pageantry of it all is fun. But it's like, oh boy. Ugh, fucking oh, I didn't know anybody was going to ask me about the Oscars tonight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of humanity is here. It's uh, it's Vanity Fair. Oh, it's all about Vanity yeah. Fair. Yes, that's where we let loose and have a little bit of fun. Okay, uh, can I just okay. stop that right there? Of course. She clearly misses the reference he's making. Yes. He's making a reference to the famous novel Vanity Fair. I think he, what he's saying is that it's like all of humanity, like peacocking around yeah. on display for each other. It's and she big. assumes that he's talking about the Vanity Fair after party that takes place after the Oscars. Yes. So, so point. Idiot Hugh Grant. <laughs> um, wait, oh, may I? May I say that, yes, that is a point because I, I think he kind of did it on purpose and, you know, was like, I don't know what to say. You're all vain. I bet right. you think this song yes. is about you, you know. And then and then she was like, yes, we are. Meet you there. And he was like, um, I thought that. But I, I think um, that is what she's talking about. You know what I mean? Like, she is asking dumb questions. He should have a dumb answer. Is that really such a great answer? Well, I th I think that that Hugh Grant. I mean, he has a bit of a reputation of being a, a prickly dude, um, but, and I I think that he does sort of take a little bit of pride in sort of not giving the the uh, the sort of PR answer. Like I think he likes to make that a little awkward, and I don't mind it. I honestly, it's like, you know, I sometimes you'll see people like that Austin Butler dude, the dude who played Elvis, who thinks is, he's Elvis now. Yeah, what'd you say? He thinks he's Elvis now, but yeah. He does, but but he's very good. I was watching some of that red carpet. He's really good at 
answering those idiots at face value and in good faith and making it seem genuine. Hugh Grant couldn't do that if he tried. Like the, this, right. this sort of snarkiness is going to come through regardless, I think, with somebody like him. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, good to but, know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what, but is, so was he enjoying this? Because you, you heard it left from somebody else and cut to this woman and him because they don't want you to see anybody go, no, thanks, I'd rather not. So why do it? Do you, is he enjoying himself? Right. Why come? Why do it? I get why come, I guess, because well, then... he's a presenter. Uh... OK, but why do it? Why do the pre thing? Don't do it. I think you have to. I don't I think, think that's you have to. well, I mean, OK, you're, you're right. I don't mean in front of God in the government. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> you're right. He should have gone in the service entrance. I agree. <laughs> he, should right. have, uh, he should have been airdropped <laughs> into the arena. Just say it's not me. And then the woman will say, oh, sorry, I got wrong information. Bye. They don't fucking know. Oh, it's all about Vanity yeah. Fair. Yes, that's where we let loose and have a little bit of fun. Okay, weirdo. Um, what are you most excited to see tonight? To see? Yeah, well, I know that you probably watched a few of the movies. Are you excited to see anybody win? Do you have your hopes up for anyone? Um, not, no, no, no one in particular. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, point idiot in a few. <laughs> No, I'm not here to see any. I I love it. I don't mind it at all. It's like, why Mine, does everybody? Love it. Don't get me wrong. We both love it. But why does everybody have to sort of like join in this sort of the empty calories of just you know? Oh yeah, it's it's a night when we all come together. It's magical. But he's I mean, trying. If he was putting on an act or something, or there's some deliberate jokes, you'd go, oh okay, fucker. But. It yeah. seems like he's trying. And then whenever he leaves, by the way, not to jump ahead, when he leaves, he full on rolls his eyes like, well, that was that was dumb. So he expected it to go well and he didn't expect to be funny. I get it. On the one hand, I'm with Christian. Like, why are we continuing this facade? Like, you ask me a dumb question. I make up an answer so that we both, you know, stay in this world. But the other side of that is. You're entering this world. Uh, you're on the red carpet. You're an actor. Yes. Act like this is what people came here for. There's a reason why there's a whole hour, or however the fuck long, before the Oscars, where we get to see people walking into a theater. Why is that TV? Because, Hugh, you're supposed to be charismatic. Do what you do right. in the movies. You stumble on a couple words, and then you go, oh, you're so pretty. I don't hey, know you don't what you do. do. You don't just do your movies, too, and then you, you got to see you here sometimes. You do late-night talk shows, and you try to act like you're better than us, and we go, oh, I, this person's fucking interesting more than my friends. That's who you are, so th this is no fucking different. It makes me think of Prince Harry and, uh, and uh, Meghan. And, you know, I... I the, the whole thing about the royal family is a joke. It's stupid. I don't give a fuck what you do. Go in, then go, oh, you're racist. I can't fucking believe it. And take a billion dollars from them and set up a new life. And you got all your attention and rate a book. Fine. But but then don't act like it's such a big fucking. You know what I mean? Do do whatever the fuck you want. But don't then don't go. Really? I didn't know the, the, the game was racist. Well, I remember you, that. Of course like, you knew. I used to say something when uh, when. Henry Rollins kind of became a it, he started showing up on like M, like MTV like hosting 120 minutes and stuff like that in the 90s and he would do this thing where he would introduce like a, a band and he'd be like next band up is Smashing Pumpkins you know I guess if you like that kind of thing you know yeah. and I would just he's like once you accept the gig you do forfeit the right to be above the gig right you know so right, I mean I, also, I guess I'm coming around to your point slightly Keith let's nice. remember that everything this job is is stupid. You, as an adult, are memorizing lines so you can go and pretend to be a character. This is what children do. And now you're pretending to have fun because somebody gave you a suit that costs, I don't, I feel like saying 10,000 makes me look stupid. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's a reason why we celebrate you. This is you celebrating this back, even if it is beyond you. It clearly isn't. I don't know. I'm willing to accept that, you know, sometimes when you're kind of doing crowd, like sometimes I'll be on stage and I will go into the audience to do like crowd work. And for whatever reason, I just have a brain fart. Like it just, I don't have my facilities to sort of riff the way. I mean, it happens on podcasts too. Some might argue it's happening right now, but, uh, 
sometimes your wit just momentarily evades you, huh? but that's what you rely on. And so if you don't have the muscle of being genuine, you end up stammering like that. This do, is so you know funny I mean? because, because... I, I do know what you mean, but he does have the muscle to to memorize things. And I don't know what he's surprised by. Who are you wearing? Uh, what are you excited by? These are, There are five questions he's going to be asked all fucking night. What are you looking forward to? Who are you wearing? What are you excited? These are feelings. You get your PR person, your manager, your fucking partner, your children to go, what should I say? When Literally, out of Keith didn't get to this part. Somebody goes, yeah, she goes to him, um, who's the designer? And he goes, oh my God, I forgot. I get that it's a brain fart, but... <laughs> well, and but that, 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 I, like that, that I think is, is also so, sort of a, a passive aggressive or an intentional thing of like, I'm undercutting the importance of this dumb question by with not my tuxedo my with my tuxedo. You know what I would have done if I was the interviewer? I'd be like, OK, and take two. Hugh Grant, how <laughs> are you? I, I you know. Perhaps coincidentally, <laughs> I thought that his bit, his joke in the ceremony itself was the biggest, was a really funny moment where he called himself he a scrotum. I thought that was very funny. Yeah, it was hilarious. What, what did he do, Keith? It's a little dry, he's trying with stuff. He said, uh, This woman, I want to mention face cream, and this woman I'm with, who was he with? It was Annie McDowell because it was, he was in uh, four runnings and a funeral with her 30 uh, years ago. Good. And so he's making a remark that she clearly uses. Condi uh, face moisturizer and he doesn't. This was Meanwhile, she was dressed down, so I didn't really get the joke. But he's pretty. I don't get it. Well, yeah, we well, don't, but he's like it. wrinkly, and, and you know, and he's he yeah. doesn't. You know, I kind of appreciate that he's an old dude who's got saggy, craggly skin. I'm so sick of smooth-looking old people. I don't I, like I... famous, attractive guys acting like they're ugly and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> God gave that to you. You're spitting in God's face. That's a bigger sin than suicide. Wow. Yeah. That escalated. Hi, I'm ugly. Oh, I'm at home in my PJs. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm ugly. Tom Cruise comes out. We don't have it like we used to. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brad Pitt's taking, you know, Mucilex. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Fuck off. What are you wearing tonight, then? <laughs> Just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember my tailor. That's okay. Yeah. Ta shout out to the tailor. Yeah. Um, so tell me, what does it feel like? And he just stands there with his hand on his hip. Yeah, what else you got? Just leave. Just say thank you for your time and leave. Point interviewer, yes, for that yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't to know, be I in disagree. Glass Onion, it was such an amazing film. She's talking really about Glass Onion. It. I love a thriller. How fun is it to shoot something like that? Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. Okay, but you're in it! I don't know what to say to you! What do you want to see at the Oscars? You don't know, okay? What are you wearing that we always ask? You don't know. Okay, can we talk about Glass Onion? Ah, uh, sweetheart, I was only in it for a little bit. Then I guess you weren't in it! Well, I mean, you're, he, you're he is barely in it. He is it barely in it. it po yeah, he's barely in it. It points out that the, that the main detective is gay. It's important. Uh, it, it's in there for five. Okay, is there anything about that interesting? I wasn't in it much. Let's let me bring in the rest of the cast. But I'm sorry, on. I asked. But who cares how much he's in in it? There's a reason why you're here, and I can't name anything else you did. So unless you gave me your resume, I'm Thanks. asking you. But who cares? Who cares if that's what I want to focus on? That you were on screen for three seconds. What was it like? Did you have to fly out to be on screen for three seconds? How long does three seconds get to shoot? Like Keith said, I'm in my pajamas. I don't get to shoot. Tell me how long three seconds gets to shoot. Did you did you sit in a trail? Did they give you an entire was trailer? Was that his entire if answer? Ran, Keith if caught, ran, cut it off. Was that his entire answer? Oh, well, because it's well, entirely possible he may have gone into some of that. It's entirely possible. Let's find out. I might be yeah. incredibly embarrassed even though I'm, <laughs> I'm playing. Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's see if I'm fucking my Myself. I'm gonna be real embarrassing about one second. Oh boy, I'm just dragging it on so that I don't have to hear it. Right away. Yeah, we never fucking know. It, like if he brings up selective this, editing, just like the <laughs> January right. six footage. If he brings <laughs> me and Tucker Carlson, if he brings up, if you're at a party with him and he brings up uh, Knives Out, go. You weren't even in it. Barely three seconds. I hear another Knives Out thing. For I you. don't think he would bring it up though. 
You better not, this great friend of yours. By the way, new Christian, how many decades now? Never heard him once talk about Hugh Grant. But all right, it's his hero. I think Hugh Grant is a very gifted romantic comedy actor. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Who's ugly as sin. So good for him. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's, I went back a little bit. Here's the full thing, uninterrupted. I'm sure it's going to be great, even though I'm the one who knew I was going to play this. All right, here we go. Let's see. Something like that. Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. Yeah, but yeah. still, you showed up and you had fun, right? Uh, almost. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. It was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then he rolls his eyes so look for who to hand the mic to nobody's there okay i will say this though if he had given these these fucking completely non-memorable answers that you clearly wanted him to have given this sort of verbal you know just diarrhea of like yeah, the magical hollywood this is the night where we right. celebrate film you would not even have been playing this right now you wouldn't have even noticed it you wouldn't even you wouldn't even have looked up what from your gift. phone to see what was going on on the TV screen. So you could say that this is creating a moment. I can't. I don't want you to tell people that I can say that. You're able to say that. That's your DNA. I am mm -hmm. not able to say that. Okay. Don't even put that out Ke there. Keith, Keith likes it boring and basic. I get it. He wants things you to like be it. the way like things have always been. Shit and that you want canned do. answers from people who don't care about their craft. Are those our choices, Christian? Of... Christian? Canned answers or what, bitch? Those are your choices. <laughs> hi, what? Like, isn't that more fun? <laughs> she said hi. I don't have any problem with, with people <gasps> finding those people repulsive. I, I really don't. Like, I don't know if you saw the other one. Did you see the clip of the dude, the guy who was wearing, like, the green velour jacket or whatever? And he said to Kate Hudson, he's like, you know what it's like to win an Oscar. And she's like, I've never won an Oscar. And he's like, oh, that's awkward. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, th those people, I'm sorry, those people, the who are you wearing people, they don't care about art at all. They don't care about film. They don't care about writing. They don't care about acting. They Wait, care think, about I'm like, sorry. glamour he and he gossip. Cared about and, the, he cared about the art saying, I was only in a movie for three seconds. That's caring about the three seconds. I think you were in. it's calling bullshit. I'm like, okay, you clearly just were handed a note that says I was in Glass Onion. You clearly didn't see it. So what? Or, or he have gets any... handed a note on on the words that he says all the time. That's why he's famous. He gets handed a note that says you say these words. And then he goes says the words. Where does he think he is? You think the Oscars are 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 appreciating people art listening, she just held up a ballot in front of the, the camera in case the oscars listening. appreciate art you think people watch for yes. art there are five movies on here every <laughs> fucking section is five movies you people talk to me that's about how true. i don't watch movies there are five movies here that's what the fuck happened in art in 2022 not everybody but i'm not saying everybody five movies that's what art was in 2022 that's what film and art was do you think this, the Oscars are a joining together of appreciating art or it's bullshit in dresses and weird clothes that we're supposed to admire? That's all it is. A combination of the two of them. And clearly there are going to be some people who are, you know, actors or whatever, who are going to sort of in subtle or not so subtle ways rebel against that other half of the equation. Rebel, like, rebel, but put, put your elbows into it. Put a little grease it into it. Every year. This is a boring rebellion. I believe you could have done this rebellion a little better with over 50 years of your life. You could have came up with it. You know, you expect these questions to be answered. You drop the ball. That's fine. It's very entertaining right now. But he didn't do anything impressive. He just said, uh, <coughs> this is so stupid. And then went inside and sat there for hours watching a stupid thing. This is so stupid. But here I am. I washed. I had a tailor made this fucking suit. But it's so stupid. I'm not a fan of Hugh Grant. Now, as I sang before, Hugh Grant, no, I disown you. <laughs> thank you. There were no, uh, there were no women directors nominated, and uh, ladies, can you try a little harder? It's like yeah. <laughs> a little embarrassing. I don't know. See what guys are doing? Do that, and then, boom, you're nominated. Well, well we them. keep asking what they're wearing. You know, it's yeah. like, okay. Watch what the white men are making, and that's what people like, apparently. Come on. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was the host. 
He said that uh, if anyone commits violence this time, they will be awarded the Oscar for Best Actor and permitted to give a 19-minute speech. <laughs> told the audience, he said, do what you did last year. Nothing. You know, maybe give the assailant a hug. You know, whatever you want. <laughs> he wasn't there last year. He's got the balls. Why not? I assume Will Smith wasn't there then? No, I wanted him to run he's, in like a uh, for ten pro years. wrestling. I wanted him to run in like to Wild Wild West, you know? Wild Wild West. <laughs> 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 when I bounce into that, and everybody's like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, he did say, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, he said, hopefully it goes off. Uh, we're doing best documentary, and hopefully it goes off without a hitch now oh. that we're here without hitch. Oh. Put your hands together and keep them to yourselves for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so he was, he was getting it here and again. That's ballsy. I like that. I like that people are like, how are they still talking about this? It's the one year anniversary of the ceremony where it happened. There were going to be jokes about it. Like, right. Right. this is so old. How come people are still talking about this? I don't know. Because right. it's the Oscars right. and it happened at the Oscars. Never forget. Me, guys, I want to talk about something. Aren't people talking about this too much? Uh, David Byrne did the song. This is a life song for what's it, the hot dog movie. Oh, everything, everything everywhere, everywhere all, all at once or the hot dog movie i like it I, th- I don't like when i don't know if somebody makes a mistake in a song mm. yeah give it thumbs down what's that song i don't know <laughs> How does i don't it go? know it's funny i saw the movie i don't remember the song <laughs> from it i mean that's i, I heard i saw it being performed by david byrne i don't know the fuck he was doing hmm. okay he's quirky well, i mean david byrne it, you know i i'm a huge fan of him as a dude even when I don't love everything he makes musically. But uh, he wrote this really fascinating book called Why Music Works that is super interesting if you're into that kind of thing. And I saw his uh, American Utopia show, and it's really great. And the dude's in, he's very old. Like, he's underratedly old. He does not have to be sort of as creatively active as he is. And so I, I will always uh, give him credit. They're How old is he? Neither because of them is looking at the camera, they don't care about about two hours into the Oscars is when Jimmy Kimmel said, this is the point of the night you kind of missed the slapping, right? <gasps> there is no getting away from it, Willie. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I think the only one of the main cast of the hot dog movie that didn't win was the daughter. And she, well, but she was against. She was against somebody that was in the same movie she was against jamie, jamie lee curtis, curtis. She so was against jamie lee curtis but a daughter the daughter time traveled through dimensions to search for a mom who loved her and you know who was able to beat her the fucking irs god damn it they are good you do not fuck with the irs this is so weird i thought the girl in the movie would be the new like icon sort of Halloween costume, mm. uh, the most quoted one. I thought that she would be the representation, not the hot dog fingers. We're calling it the hot dog movie. I thought that that's she's the big reveal about the everything bagel. Like mm-hmm. I thought, I thought she. Yeah, was the it is. One. It is weird to see like what sort of becomes a thing that people latch onto. Um, yeah. I saw Cambria and I saw it when it was still. Um, like we saw it at a screening where you had to fill out your thoughts about it afterwards. Um, and my main, I, I really loved it, but I think both Cambry and I thought that it was probably about 15 minutes longer than it needed to be. Agreed. And I wonder, and somebody asked last night, he's like, well, do you, did they take that? Maybe, maybe the movie that then went wide was shorter. Maybe, maybe I'm the one who won them the award by telling them it was mm, too long. Could have been. So I would like to really- take some credit. For that. It was really eight hours long. Did you see? I, I noticed right away uh, at the Oscars there was one person. It seemed like only one. One in the middle of everybody in the audience wearing a mask. And to me, I'm like, at that point, what is the point? I don't know your health condition. I don't know this and that. But you could ask for an aisle minimum, right in the middle with the mask. I don't know what you're doing. It ends up turning out to be Jessica Chastain, and we know this because during one of those stupid. Uh, time-consuming moments while they changed the stage. Jimmy Kimmel's out there doing improv. Improv never works at the Oscars. Mm -mm. Ever. Literally ever. That stick with Michael B. Jordan and the other dude, uh, Major Jonathan Majors, where they talked about cinematography or what, it was really, really strained. It was very awkward. 
But anyway, during this time, um, Jimmy Kimmel's in the audience. He's like, hey, uh, Malala, who got uh, blown up fighting for rights uh, in the Middle East. Uh, what did you think? Did you think Harry Styles really spit on Chris Pine? And she's like, uh, what? I'm sorry. Ha- what happened to Malala, Keith? What uh, happened she, to her? she got blown up for fighting. She got for blown up. Rights. Blown up. She got blown yeah. up. Oh, you know what? I hope you. I hope I know Malala. And I go, did you hear about my daughter Malala, Christian? Uh, she was. Uh, she got blown up on a bus uh, for fighting for women's rights. She's in the hospital. And then do you go, slow down? <laughs> so your daughter Malala got blown up, and is she in seven operating rooms or? Slow down, everybody. Malala got blown up, and still they did they wheel her into the Oscars then? If she got blown up. No, she only got she her wasn't... face completely disfigured from no. a bomb on a bus. That's Dude, all. She was, she was you shot. She was shot. Yeah, not blown up. She wasn't blown, blown up. up. She was shot. Where was she shot? In the in the head, I believe. In the face. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to exaggerate it. All right, you got shot in the face. Okay. So strident and so just completely locked in. There's no possible way I could be wrong here. Of course, I know what she I'm got talking shot about. In the face. Right, and I said blown up, and I didn't mean On to a confuse bus. People. I don't know what incident you're pulling. Would she get shot? Was she by a bus when she got shot? You did make me quickly Google like, was Malala blown up on a she bus? Blown up and put together for the Oscars. <laughs> but no, was that's she... right. She was just shot. Was she? Was she at the Oscars? Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, and because got... I think uh, the documentary about her was nominated. I believe. Uh... What was that one called? Uh, it was called uh, Ernest Goes to Pakistan. <laughs> oh, that we could say. <laughs> oh, we, I don't know. Weekend in Ernest. Oh, that would have been. Okay. Well, anyway, she was there. She's like, I don't, I don't, this, I don't know. I, uh, I, I only work for peace. And then Jimmy Kimmel's like, yeah, this whole thing is stupid. Great answer, he says. Great answer. Hilarious. Then he goes to the next dummy. But anyway, he ends up going to Jessica Chastain and asks her a question. So now she has to take off her mask. It wasn't planned because their answer was so fucking stupid. So, so what do you? I'm gonna ask Jessica Chastain wearing a mask. A fucking. So she has to take off her mask. Why? Give a not answer. Well, she doesn't want to be rude. And then she, put it back on. No, she doesn't know how masks work. <laughs> She didn't have to like. I I don't know that she had to wear it and then sit next to however many people. She, she also could, go to the yeah. Party. She could very well have had a cold or something, and so she was protecting the people around her. It wasn't necessarily that you mean? know who knows why she was wearing a mask. I mean, I think people now have like masking has become sort of accepted on a general level that like you know unless you're a weirdo. I, what I kind don't of think mask anybody... did she wear? Like a bedazzled one. Did, was it, was it like black. the hospital one? It was classy black. I, I appreciated classy that. Okay. Did you notice, though, when he went to Jessica, Jessica Chastain, for a moment, Nicole Kidman thought he was coming to her, and she got super excited and yeah. then looked visibly disappointed when he went to Jessica Chastain. Yeah. That's how you know it wasn't planned. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Nicole Kidman emoted? Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. You could barely tell. I mean, it Holy was... shit. <laughs> Uh, the best movie was presented by Harrison Ford. That's always a hoot. He never knows where he's at. He never gives a <laughs> shit. He's the only one getting paid. And then, so he gives the award and it goes to the hot dog movie. And the dad in the hot dog movie is Short Round in Indiana Jones. So Short Round gets on stage, gives Indiana Jones a big hug. And then Indiana Jones doesn't even know why. He's like, oh, you, know, you know I'm not Oscar, right? <laughs> He doesn't this know guy? nothing. Yeah, he doesn't know. No oh, wow. Nice. But great work for the crisis team that uh, very seriously, the Oscars said, uh, will be there and they're planning in case, uh, you know, because they understand any craziness could happen. Let's see here. Well, they um, understand that now? How amazing. <laughs> Ricky Wait. Kirshner, the showrunner, said this year's Oscars will be different when changes have been made. There's no more. This is what we used to do. Oh, okay. It was totally different this year, I guess. I missed it. Uh, the Oscars will be honoring the crafts and what it takes to make a movie. Oh, Christian was oh, right. a change. So that's exciting. The orchestra <laughs> will be on, on stage, but they weren't really on stage. They were in a different room on like the same level of the stage. Hmm. But you couldn't, you didn't, they, sometimes they had to cut to them. But the audience didn't always see the, 
the Oscars, the orchestra. They still get hidden, and they know to because they kept playing people off stage. They kept forgetting that some people have more than one person accepting that one award. And so when one person talks, they're like, I guess we're done. And so multiple times people are like, and I did he did he did he. Yeah, I always feel bad when it's like one of those sort of marginal awards, like short form documentary or animated feature or whatever. And the one guy <laughs> totally takes up all the time. And then it's like, mm -hmm. and then the other person steps like, now it's my turn. And then it, like, I always wonder what the conversation is backstage between the two of them afterwards. Like, Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Like a whole podcast of just mm -hmm. af after the thank yous. Yeah. <laughs> so the Call Oscar it. said... This time we have a, a crisis team, and uh, we'll make sure nothing bad happens. And then at the end of the show, uh, Jimmy Kimmel said, good work, crisis team. Anyway, we now join uh, Good Morning America already in progress. It was three hours, 38 minutes long. My spectrum <laughs> asked me if I was still watching. That's when your show's too long. <laughs> and then, then he turned out, then he went to a little board on the side that said, you know, a uh, number of times since the last uh, accident on stage. And he turned that to... One one time there has been no accidents on stage so far. That's no funny. Um, yeah, it's cool. Hey, who's this asshole? It's uh, we'll put these pictures on the website. Yeah, I saw that. This woman has a dress and like a. It's almost like a you know like a like a flowing um, uh, marriage gown, wedding gown, and it's it's so fucking big that it's easily blocking the lap. Yeah, the it rises about right. eighteen inches above the top yeah. of her head. Like you got to be a real asshole. Who is that? I don't know. I don't even know. Apparently, I, I just saw on Twitter that she's uh, she's a musician of some sort. Uh, I know that ASAP Rocky was sitting a couple seats down from her, so I'm assuming that probably maybe she was involved with one of the, the Black Panther songs that was nominated. I'm taking a, a very wild stab there. But she's not just like a seat filler, apparently. I don't I'm know what would be worse. If that was, would be hilarious. <laughs> it's my last day. I'm going out. I'm looking her up now. Her name's Susan Bitch. Okay. Right. Jeez. Uh, the oh, singer's yeah, name is Thames. Thames. Maybe that's what she goes by. Maybe that's what she goes by. Then. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, there's a guy uh, on Twitter. His real name is uh, Will Smith, not the Will Smith, but uh, Will Smith. And uh, but when he so people, of course write to him that they're going to kill him or how happy they are that he smacked Chris Rock. So today he wrote, I guess I'll just watch from home. Again, not the real Will Smith, but it has his name and it has a blue check mark because you can buy them. <gasps> and, and then, and then so, and just reading the comments under are funny. LOL. Love your sense of humor. We love you. Always will. Always will. Um, does, what does he have as his bio? Uh, you can see in the bio, it's not. It says it's not him in the bio. Okay. But nobody and cares. People don't care. Wow. Nope. The blue check mark it doesn't help though. How There's... much is a blue check mark that he was willing to? Why not? Right. It gave it him to himself for his birthday. Now he's Will Smith. What is it like? Fifteen bucks or something? This person says, "I applaud you just for slapping." Don't know how you kept your cool, my man. He first of all, he didn't keep his cool. Like he literally did not keep his cool. Like. <laughs> I don't know how you stopped at punching a man in the face li on live television. Like that's really shows a lot of restraint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will is embarrassed and hurt by what Chris Rock said in the special, by the way, the reports are coming in. Are you happy about that? Well, here's what's funny. I knew this was going to happen. I think I predicted mm -hmm. it. Chris, uh, excuse me. Will Smith Very said bold prediction that Chris he Rock didn't was going to make it. jokes. He didn't watch it. He didn't watch it, but he's upset at it. He's upset by it, but he didn't even watch it. So you yeah. don't get the satisfaction, but just know that I'm still disappointed. No, I don't. I don't think you. I, I don't think I care. It. He's lying. It's a thing. These fucking like these egotists that watch everything that, that that's anything about them. Of course, they watched it. Prince Harry saw the South Park episode about them. They didn't just go. I heard about it. and I'm extremely disappointed. <laughs> OK, take that hate with you, but never look into it. He didn't watch it, but he had people tell him what Chris said. He, I mean, then just watch it. You either right. watch it or or you completely ignore it. Uh, Will said, I would like for Chris to let it go. What Chris said was distasteful. Again, never watched it, though. But he had that opinion. I would like for Chris to let it go. And it was very distasteful that he didn't watch it. Got but, the, the, the right. short, the description of it and is 
and said it was distasteful. Who's the, who was the mayor? Was a governor? Who was the governor of Alaska? The fucking idiot that wanted to be vice Palin. president. Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. Uh, there was a movie that she was featured in, and uh, she goes, I-, "I didn't see it, but it's totally inaccurate." I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, so you did see it, and they got it right. Okay, good. To know. It's kind of uh, nice. That if you if you could have told yourself, however many years ago, that one day you would forget who Sarah Palin was. Like you probably wouldn't have right. believed yourself. Right. You know? right. It's kind of a nice reminder. It's like, oh yeah, these people don't last forever. Like they do go right. away sometimes. Things got more uh, nutty, thank God. Yeah, Chris Rock, of course, during his special, he says about Will Smith, his wife was fucking her son's friend. I normally don't talk about this shit, but for some reason they put this shit on the internet. We all been cheated on. Everybody here has been cheated on. None of us have been interviewed by the person that cheated on us with on television. Hey, I was sucking somebody's dick. How'd that make you feel? I love that. And I, I can't imagine the two of them, Will Smith and his wife, watching that together being like, God, it's good, honey. Like, you can't, you can't watch that together, though. I do think they both watch it, but I can't, mm. I can't imagine they watch it together. I wonder if they both lie and say they both didn't watch it to each other. I, I will say, I don't know if it's just that I'm at a different point in my life or whatever, but the entire fascination around Will Smith and Jada, I've never understood why people care why it's a big deal why it's just this i mean i i mean i get it that it's a very silly situation but it's just like i I don't know my brain just shuts off when people start talking about will smith i i I find him a profoundly uninteresting person but Hmm. but that's just me what do do you think when chris rock said i'm not a victim multiple times in his special does he know what the word means like it's okay it doesn't mean you're a bitch you're, you're, it happened. You were a victim. That's okay. That was what you did on stage was crying. I cry every day on <laughs> Keith and the Girl. I know it. Okay. And I'm more than fine with it. What do you think this is? <laughs> you know, that, that I feel like that's, um, oh God, I'm going to say it. it. It feels like a, a very male response to being a victim, but also that we're all trying to get out of like, um, it, knowing that we're victims of some stuff, but not living in that and being exclusively a victim. And this is, but the word victim right now means pussy because yeah. they see it as like a far left thing. They see it as a trigger. They see it as right. you being soft and like being able to be pushed really, really easily. But well, and there's just an imprecision of language that there's just, there should be two different words to describe the things we're talking about. Like, getting punched in like being a person who is slapped in the face and being a person who then uses that trauma to sort of define themselves or whatever. Those should be two different words. The, the word victim shouldn't cover both of those situations, but right. they do. And so that's why, yeah, it's a very guy response to be like, like, because I'm sure that, you know, privately whenever anybody else calls himself a victim, it makes them bristle, you know? And so, they're determined to not call themselves a victim, even when they literally have been victimized. <laughs> yeah. And I know that like, um, and more, it's more, uh, it has been more female to change the word victim into survivor and like, uh, switch it that way. But yeah, it just, people are trying to avoid that. I think it was Bill Burr. I saw him do this joke. And I think it was him. He was like, um, you know, all these people are victims and blah, 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 and whatever. And then he goes, this one time I was about to go on stage. The comic came off stage and she did some kind of thing like tap him on the dick or, or something inappropriate right before he went on. And he oh. admitted it threw him off. He goes, she knew what she was doing and it was just a tap and it wasn't a big deal. And he goes, I didn't call authorities. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I'm not a victim, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, but everything else that you're saying is you responding to be a victim of this, right? Whatever you want to call it, misconduct, let's just call it. You are saying she knew what she was doing was wrong. It threw me off for a second. I didn't become a victim for life, but I was a victim of her assaulting me or being inappropriate right before I got on stage. And I'm like, you are describing all of the things that when when it annoys you, when people call themselves victims, that's all we're trying to say is this happened. It was shitty. This person kind of did it on purpose, knew what they were doing and are pretending to be cute. I didn't appreciate that. I still did my job, but I don't want that to happen again. Yeah. And add on to that. That's a victim. uh, the, the contextual 
like if you do flip it around, like like add on the discomfort that you felt and how it threw you off and that it felt passive aggressive or with all of the sort of societal sort of weight of being a woman in that situation, being on the end of that and you know, not being taken consistent. seriously in your field. And, and like and uh, like clearly your powers of perception are great enough that you can understand why that might be something that people have a problem with. It's you know? so ironic whenever whenever people go, but I'm not a victim on stage or else the irony follows like almost inevitably. Yeah. Uh, Will Smith has earned the praise of Michael Jackson's relative, Todd, T-A-J, for slapping Chris Rock. So sure, why not? You... <laughs> so what? Will Smith, well, because... Uh, because uh, Michael Jackson was attacked in Chris Rock special. Michael Jackson's uh, relatives are saying, "Good, Will Smith, we're on your side." There's a lot. There's a lot of that. There's there's a real oh. culture around defending Will Smith against uh, against Chris Rock in this, which some of which I understand. I do think that for reasons that are completely understandable, that there is a circle the wagons feeling that, especially when when like white people start coming in hard to kind of like you know come in on will smith i do think there is an idea of just like we're we're not going to like we're, we're going to protect our own <laughs> like i i do think that there is an element of that and i don't necessarily even think that it's wrong i think it's kind of understandable but you see it pop up a lot whenever you know like you see it, you saw it happen a lot with michael jackson you see it happen with like Kyrie irving Kyrie irving and kanye or whatever this sort of like we can have these conversations, but the minute like white people come in and start trying to dictate, you know, there's sort of an instinctual feeling of like, no, fuck you. We're going to take this person's side against. That. Sure. It's just funny to me that Will Smith is going, yay, I got uh, people on Michael Jackson's team defending me. Because <laughs> Michael Jackson, fuck boys. <laughs> hey, you know who else is on? Let's see if OJ agrees with me because he got a little bit of it, too. You know, oh, this is so. These are some wagons going around. <laughs> uh, hey guys, uh, hey guys, it's all going to be okay. Jared from Subway has spoken out, <laughs> <Right>. and uh... <laughs> yeah, Cosby wants to give me work now. <laughs> uh, top movies of the weekend: number one, Scream Six. They can make these in three weeks flat. New Scream Six. This time, the screams in New York. Wait, we're moving on. Did I win the ballot thing? I feel no. You lost, Penda. You know you lost. I don't know why you'd want to be embarrassed. By a lot? Did you take? Did I get a score? You have a score. Did I get anything right? Christian Finnegan. Pinocchio. I didn't yeah. get Pinocchio right. I had. Did you? I, uh, I got did Pinocchio you look? Right. Did you look up who will probably win in the ones that uh, you didn't know? I didn't look up anything. No, I didn't oh, look up anything. Oh, okay. sorry. Just checking. I, I took a, all of the sort of uh, animated short and live action short and all that was just completely. I just looked at the names and sort of randomly picked one. Thirteen um, out of twenty-three for Christian. Okay. Well, I was underwhelmed with my performance this year. What's that? I was underwhelmed with my performance this year. There's a few that I feel like I should have gotten, but didn't. Okay, you I got guess. 13 and Keith got 12. 12. I gotta be close out and of 23. Finally went to the movies and saw everything everywhere all at once and nothing else. Six. Oh. That's pretty good. Is oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like 27%, I think. Why do we uh, have to percent it? Just say six. Six is a nice number. Yeah, I just have to say the other number, 23. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you have to, I guess. Scream 6 is number one. Creed 3 is number two. And I did see it. Oh, how was it? Yeah, Keith asked me. I, I saw Creed 1 last week. I'd never seen it, so I would have enjoyed going. But uh... It was artful. I think I'm a little sick of... How they pretend boxing works and that uh, nobody can have a match in two weeks because that would be interesting to the movie this guy gets out of it goes hey i'm in jail but quite frankly i'm in jail because of you you have the career i always wanted this was in the promo and the guy goes yeah well you know you you you, you can't have it because you got to work your way up and he's like but that'd be a boring movie i don't want to i want to fight you right now and so they fight they got to find a reason to have it happen quickly. Yes. Yeah. It can't so be like, had... oh, my God, in seven months, it's all going right. to go down. Right. No, th th those movies, uh, they're kind of always the same. You know, y you uh, the, the new guy will fight a guy that you like, beat him, call you a bum, 
Someone old from the franchise will die. You'll do a workout montage. You'll <laughs> fight that guy. You'll win. And then you'll both forgive each other because it's the only way men can talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only way they can show emotion is if like they've both just literally punched each other up. into emotion. 12 <laughs> rounds of where every punch hits. You've seen boxing. <laughs> it's fucking boring. In fact, fans of boxing have to act like that's the brilliance of the art to the dance. No, you the know what's science. It's the highlight reels. It's the punches to the face, the punches to the chest. That's the exciting stuff. And a movie can give it to you. But they'd have to be super fucking heroes. Mm. So it's a little. It was a little. No, you, you really, you really popped the balloon of Creed three. You know what? I think I'm just. I wonder if I'm just seeing too many of them. I, maybe I saw too many Rocky movies and I'm over Keith, it now. You see I'm, three movies a day, so it's possible. So it's possible. That's all I'm saying. No co- cocaine bear. They got that right. <gasps> I saw cocaine bear. See, we went to the movies. And. And. Oh, I think Keith, you were right. The people who did I thought I thought, well, I know what cocaine does. I've never done cocaine, but I'll recognize the jokes that are cocaine based. Sure. But no, it was different giggles for people who were like, <laughs> I want Coke now. That's what it sounded like. Right. It was so the people who laughed a certain way at the cocaine jokes, I was like, Wow, I think I, like you're you're you might be active right now with the cocaine. But I'm, he's very I'm goofy. constantly surprised how many people I know have done coke. Like I've never done coke and I kind of assumed that most people hadn't, but everyone now it's becoming very clear to me that most of my peers have, have done coke at various points in their lives. We put so a poll on our forums, the majority the majority of the audience did coke. I was surprised. Yeah. I was surprised until I started meeting so many comedians and it seems so it, apparently and maybe this is just via Michael Fox but if if they're in the bathroom before a set they're not peeing or pooping. They're, they're- <laughs> I've heard that too. I've never I've never encountered it. The only times I've ever seen people doing coke have been like at bars where I'd go into the bathroom and there'd be somebody doing coke or whatever like at like 7B down the East Village like that used to happen every once in a while. It doesn't happen to me either. I think it's because they know we'll say no. I think it's the fun people, Christian. <laughs> it must be. And it must be just because I have that Nancy Reagan lower back tattoo and people just assume that I'm going to say I, no. I do remember being in high school. And I'm like, this whole town doesn't know how to party, apparently, because I'm not getting any invites over here. <laughs> Courtney Cox has said she's in the, the new Scream movie. She regrets filling her face with too many fillers. Okay, right away, I'm being gaslit. I didn't fucking ask. I didn't bring it up. Do what you feel you have to do. Those aren't fillers. Fuck, whatever tools they use to make Michelangelo is what they're using on your face. It's not a filler. No, but I think Maybe there's there's like fillers many. as well. I think that's become a, a, a major trend over the past five to ten years is these things that are not quite Botox that, you know, the, these I mean, there's a reason why everyone just looks a little puffy and smooth like <laughs> in and that's the fillers. I mean, that it is what it is. And people look weird, but yeah, they don't see it because they're L.A. people. We're all the same age and from New York City, not L.A., right? I'm like, 28. You are 28. <laughs> try to stretch um i like age on my person's face no yes i can yes yes i want to see that you're older i want to know that you laughed once yes you lived a life before me yeah and and to me it's just like you're chasing an impossibility do you, you know what i mean like like you're going to look old eventually. Like the the harder you try to fight it, the more pathetic and sad you look to me. Yeah. That the minute I can see that you're trying, it's like when you see somebody whose hair is just a little too black, like you where it's like, okay, now I clearly see that you're dying your hair. And I wouldn't have and now not only do I know you're old, I know you're old and super weird about it. Yeah. Was it Chris Rock that was talking about that? People dying their hair all of a sudden? It's like, oh, mm. so that's that's you now. We just accept that. Okay. But I get I it. I it's get weird. it. I, I it don't changes it. the way people look at you. And now I have to, yeah, like a liar. You're a liar. That's how I look. <laughs> I think you're if you're really and I think- if you're 25 or 26 and you're going gray and you want it like if you're especially if you're an actor and you want to die it like that, I totally understand. But it's like once you get past 45 or 50, it, it like 
you should have some gray, like only weirdos don't have some gray in their hair at that point. Uh, Courtney Cox, uh, by the way, I, I think I bring her up, too, because I, I had a I had a crush on her. I thought, you know, she was she was born perfect. Don't fuck with what God's given you again. Another sin. Uh, she got her fillers dissolved, she says, in a new podcast. She says the the 58 year old revealed her past use and overuse of anti aging injectables. It's a domino effect, she said. You don't realize that you look a little off, and so then you keep doing more because you look normal to yourself. You look in a mirror and you go, oh, that looks good. You don't realize what it looks like to the outside person. Thank God they are removable. That's honestly, that sort of self-awareness is what I've been waiting to hear from these people. Because again, not only do they look normal in the mirror themselves, they look normal to each other because they have to all convince themselves that, that they look fine. And everybody in L.A. just walks around with the same stupid looking face. But she has the same stupid looking face because of all this work done. And she's acting to me. This is the way I'm taking it. Like she doesn't. Like now we all have to agree. You did get your fillers removed. You look amazing. You didn't because you can't. Because what you did was permanent in stone. You, 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 had, you, had, you had bones shaved, for God's sakes. Uh, now I have to look at you and be like, oh, glad your fillers are gone and you're back to your own self. Like, this is a weird lie that nobody well, has. Well, the, their baseline normal is different than ours. Do you, do you know what I mean? That it's like, I'm, I'm sure that in her mind, she's back to looking normal again. But you're right. I don't think it's one or the other. I think that she probably had surgical stuff. She clearly had surgical stuff and was doing the fillers. But I think the fillers specifically are the, are the thing that creates that weird sort of uh, slightly waterlogged look. I thought it was interesting in Creed 3 that they had um, the, one of the montage songs had, had the line about like, it's like we're from Wakanda. And that dude, Creed, he was the bad guy in Wakanda. Do they know that this guy kind of looks like the guy from Wakanda? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so you're saying that in this world, Wakanda exists. Right. And why isn't the entire movie people like, hey, do you ever notice that you look like that guy from, uh, from uh, Black Panther? Right. Like that should... And and the other guy is the bad guy in the new Ant-Man movie that he's boxing. You would think that'd be like the boxing title, you know? It makes me think of those uh, Oceans movies, the one where uh, Julia Roberts looked like Julia Roberts. I like, swear oh. to God, that was the exact example I was going to bring up. It was Oceans 11, <laughs> Oceans 12. Yeah. Right. Where She's the, the major actress. plot point. Yeah. She's the only actress in the whole fucking world, apparently. So it's like, uh, yeah, right. we live in a world where Julia Roberts exists, but Brad Pitt and George Clooney do not. Right. Uh, here's a letter from Ashley. Wow, my husband and I met you because of... Uh, my husband and I met because of Keith and the girl. We have a son who turned one years old today. So crazy that the anniversary for the show we have to thank for his existence is the same day he was born. Happy anniversary, you guys. Aww, cool. Did they name the son Keith? Or I would have to assume. What would be the masculine version of Hemdo? Hemdo. Hemdo. <laughs> no, no, beautiful. no. Let's get super modern. Hemdex. Oh, yeah. Very true. True. <laughs> uh, we've been uh, reading your messages about congratulating us on our 18th podcast anniversary, and it means a lot. So thank you. Those are always so fun to read. Make sure that you're meeting us this Sunday at uh, the 19th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Get information at keithandthegirl.com slash game show. It's virtual. It's live. Tickets and info about the game, the lineup, everything. See what I'm talking about. Keithandthegirl.com slash game show. And as I've been saying, VIPs, Keith and the Girl VIPers, you, my loves. You have a free ticket to the show this Sunday also. Become a Keith and the Girl VIP member today. Keithandthegirl.com slash VIP. And of course, click on whatever uh, platform you're staring at. Those likes, those shares. It all matters. Christian Finnegan is a fantastic comic. You want to download all his albums. Anything else people should know, Christian? Um, yeah, well, I, I will uh, remind people who may not know or have forgotten or whatever. I, I've been writing this uh, newsletter for the last year. It just had my one year anniversary called New Music for Olds, which I'm super proud of. And there's going to be an audio version of soon. Uh, it's uh, new music for olds.substack.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, helping us uh, try to make sense of this. I think we uh, solved a lot of problems. And uh, that's that. We'll talk to you soon.